Welcome back for another math lesson. Uh, we're going to do multiplying and dividing fractions at this point. Um, the last time we met, we uh, did adding, subtracting fractions and mixed numbers, and uh, got through it. Had lots and lots of problems, and I uh, hopefully you uh, came out a little bit more confident than before. Uh, I think you're going to find that multiplying and dividing fractions is uh, just as easy, maybe even a little bit easier than the adding, subtracting. Key thing is, there are different rules for this. You must abide by the rules to be successful. Um, the first rule that I use is instead of having our, um, our problems going vertically up and down, we want them to go across horizontally. So let's go ahead and begin with a problem. Let's say we have uh, 3 fifths times 25 twelfths. Now, there's a couple ways of looking at this. One way of looking at this is that this is the exact same thing as 3 times 25 over 5 times 12. We're going to take this a step further. This is the exact same thing as 3 times 5 times 5 over 5 times 3 times 2 times 2. If we were to write this using um, basically our prime factorization, if we were to write this down in uh, prime factors, this is what we'd have. And so what we would, we would end up doing is we could cross out common factors. The 3s would cross out. The 5s would cross out. We would be left with a 5 on top, and then 2 times 2 on the bottom, which is uh, 5 fourths, or simply stated as... Uh, one and one fourth. So what does what does this uh, mean? Well, it means that uh, we're basically we're multiplying the numerators up top, multiplying the denominators on bottom, and we are going to cross out any factors before we multiply to make it easy. And you know, if we don't catch all of the uh, factors in the very beginning, we will have an opportunity to. Uh, simplify the answer at the very end. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense to you. Now would you want to show all that work all the time? Absolutely not. Not necessary. However, uh, it gives you a little bit of insight of what's really uh, what's really happening when you're multiplying fractions. So let's go ahead and, and look at it uh, again but from a different perspective. Instead of doing all of that work, we're going to take our three-fifths and we're going to multiply it by uh, 25 twelfths. And using this rule, I mean, what we're looking at is we can simplify any numerator with any denominator. We can simplify going up and down. We cannot simplify going across. So, for example, if I want to, I can say, well, the 5 and the 25 have a common factor of 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And then I could look at the 3 and the 12. 3 and 12 can both be divided by 3. Therefore, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and there's nothing else I can simplify at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply. And again, if I want to think of it as one big uh, problem up top and one problem at the bottom, and this is times, this is times, 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 4 is 4, so I have 5 fourths, or 1 and 1 fourth. Either way is acceptable. I'm sure uh, a lot of your math teachers would prefer you to have the answer as a mixed number because it's easier to uh, to check that way for the entire group. But I mean, technically speaking, uh, all of the uh, either one of those answers is just fine and dandy. All right, so let's go ahead and move this one over, and we're going to try another one. Uh, all right, so. Let's look at uh, our next problem. Sometimes you're going to have uh, mixed numbers. So like you have 2 and 2 fifteenths times 3 and 3 eighths. Well, with adding and subtracting, you kept them as mixed numbers. With multiplying and dividing, you need to change them into improper fractions. That is the very first thing you have to do when you're dealing with mixed numbers. <laughs> you got to. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that right now. So. Uh, if you remember, to change a mixed number to an improper fraction, we're going to first multiply the denominator by the whole number. So 15 times 2 is 30. We're going to add it to the numerator, and we end up getting 32 over 15. I'm going to 
try this again with the other one. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 3 is uh, 27. So we're going to get 27 over 8. And we're left with uh, this fraction we're going to go ahead and multiply. So now we can go ahead and we can simplify. You don't want to be multiplying 32 by 27. That's way too much thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and divide 32 and 8 both by 8. So 32 divided by 8 is 4, and 8 divided by 8 is 1. Uh, 15 and 27, although they may not look like they have a common factor, they do in fact have one. You can divide both of them by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 27 divided by 3 is 9. And it looks like we have about what? Well, it looks like we have all the factoring out we can do. So we're going to do 4 times 9 is 36 over 5. By the way, you can do, uh, I strongly suggest that you go ahead and you uh, do an estimate just to see if your answer makes sense. Because right now you may be thinking, wow, 36 fifths? I don't know if this even is even close. Well, let's take a look. 2 and 2 fifths is approximately 2. 3 and 3 eighths, that's still about 3. Um, if I do 3 times 2, I'm going to get an answer of 6. Now, since 2 and 2 fifths, 15th is bigger than 2, and 3 and 3 eighths is bigger than 3, I know my answer is going to be larger than 6, but it is at minimum, it's going to be at minimum uh, 6. So I'm going to look at how many times does 5 go into 36? Well, it goes in 7 times. How much is left over? Well, 7 times 5 is 35. 1 is left over, so I have 1 fifth. So this is my answer. Either 36 fifths or 7 and 1 fifth. Again, dep depends on your teacher, what your teacher is asking, but usually we like you to do it as uh, mixed numbers. However, you know, when you get into uh, algebra, you're, you're going to want to keep it as improper fractions. It's much easier to work with. All right, now. That was multiplying. What about dividing? Dividing fractions is just like multiplying, except for you have one additional, uh, one additional step. Now I want to give you a couple little uh, things that you may not have known about dividing fractions. Let's say I have uh, four sixth, and I want to divide it by um, I don't know two thirds. Did you know you can actually divide a fraction going across? What I mean is 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 3 is also 2, which equals 1. You may think, well, I don't know if that's the correct answer. Well, let's, let's remember this answer that we have right here. Let's keep this in mind. And uh, we're going to try it showing our work, and then we're going to get back to this topic of uh, dividing it across. So we're going to look at this one more time. Uh, uh, 4 6 divided by two-thirds. Now, this is how it works. You're dividing by a number. It's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, which, again, I'm going to show you an example of this here momentarily because I know at, when I was your age, I always thought, which one do I flip? Because a reciprocal is basically taking a fraction and flipping it. Because if you multiply a number by its reciprocal, it always equals one. For example, two-thirds, the reciprocal of two-thirds is three-halves. If you multiply them by each other, this becomes 1 and 1. This becomes 1 and 1, and you always get 1 no matter what. That's what a uh, reciprocal is. Keep that in mind. And so when we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, we mean that we're going to take our, uh, our uh, second number here, and it's 2 thirds. We're going to flip it to 3 over 2, and then the division becomes multiplying. And so we have 4, 6, times 3 halves. We're going to go ahead and we can simplify. 4 and 2 can both be divided by 2, and we get 2 up here and 1 down here. 3 and 6 can both be divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by six or by 3 is 2. And then we can say 2 and 2 can both be divided by 2, leaving them both with 1. And hey, you know what? Look, we get the same answer as 1. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, the other way, when I just divide across, was so much easier. Why don't I always do it that way? Wouldn't it make complete sense just to do it that way every time? Well, it would be perfect in a perfect world. But as we know, we don't live in a perfect world. Let's look at a problem like this. And you tell me if we can divide it that way. If we have 7 over 33, 
we're going to divide it by 21 over 22. This is a little bit more messy than we had with the first problem. So we're not going to divide across because we want to only divide across if we're dealing with whole numbers that both divide evenly or you know, divide and have a whole uh, number as an answer. So we're going to have to go back to our uh, flipping of the second number, you know, multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to first uh, leave this the same. We're going to flip the uh, second number into 22 over 21 and change this to multiply. And now we can go ahead and begin our simplifying. Uh, well, 7 and 21 can both be divided by 7. 7 goes into 7 one time, goes into 21 three times. Now 33 and 22, they actually have a common factor of 11. So 22 divided by 11 is 2, 33 divided by 11 is 3, and it looks like we are done. So we're going to multiply. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 3 is 9. And the answer here is 2 ninths. Now, I want to show you guys something. This is kind of important to know with uh, dividing. Um, as I mentioned before, when I was younger, when I was your age, I would always forget which, which one do I flip. I know I flip one of them when I divide. I don't know which one I flip. Well, let's take a look at this. I always like to think of a number I can do in my head very easily. So if I have 6 divided by 2, I know that answer is 3. So I know what the answer has got to be. So I'm going to go ahead and make these as fractions. So I'm going to do 6 over 1 divided by 2 over 1. And like I said, I know I've got to flip one of them. So which one do I flip? Well, let's say I, I think maybe it's, I flip the uh, first one. I do uh, uh, 1 over 6 times 2 over 1. I go ahead and simplify this. I make this into a 1 this into a 3 because I, div I divide them both by 2 and I end up getting 1 third huh? Well, that does not equal 3 so that is not the correct way of doing this so I, I, I have an error here I must try something a little bit different let's see that is not going to work so how about I try All right, 6 over 1 divided by 2 over 1 how about I flip the second one? So I'm going to do 6 over 1 times 1 half. And then I'm going to go ahead and simplify. This becomes a, well, I'm going to divide them both by 2. This becomes a 1. And this becomes 3. 1 times 3, or 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. Hey, this equals 3, which is the same thing as up here. That will remind me, if I ever forget, I always have to flip the second number. I don't know if that will help you, but... It's what I always used when I was younger to help remind me. Because, you know, if you don't do this for a while, you'll tend to forget. All right. I know you guys are probably ready to get out of here. So here is your final problem. We're going to do a, a, a mixed number with division. So we got multi-steps here. So we're going to do 3 and 1 fifth divided by 2 and 2 fifths. Or I think that 2 and 2 fifteenths. So first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to... Uh, Write these as mixed numbers, so I'm going to do uh, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So I have 16 over 5, divided by, and I'm going to do 15 times 2 is 30, plus 2 is 32. So I have 32 fifteenths. Now I'm going to uh, flip the second number. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm going to do 15 over 32 times 16 over 5, I can begin simplifying. 16 and 32, I know my math facts, I can divide them both by 16. That is 1, that is 2. Or if you wanted to, you could divide them both by 2, by 4, by 8. There's lots of choices. I just I go for the biggest you know factor I can think of. Uh, 15 and 5 can both be divided by 5, which gives me a 1, and then this would be a 3. When I uh, go ahead and multiply across, 